Hey guys, Jeff Teen here, and welcome back to Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. It's been a while since we last left off. Um, but last time, if I can recall correctly... Let's see. Damon Gant took the stand and said Bruce Goodman was murdered in the uh, evidence room of the police department as well as the prosecutor's building parking lot. And shit just went down from there, and Edgeworth got in trouble. Anyway, we're back at the Wright & Co. offices. Let's see what's gonna go on. Uh, um, Mr. Wright, so... What's going on with the case, anyway? I'm a little confused. Huh? Well, um, let's see. What is going on? The victim, Detective Bruce Goodman, was stabbed to death after 5 p.m. on the 21st. He died in the prosecutor's parking lot and the police department's evidence room. What's this and the evidence room part? The prosecutor's office and the police department are 30 minutes apart by car. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Or try to, at least. Alright, let's do it. Glad she's in good spirits, but I'm not sure she's going to be much help with this. Don't be so sure, Mr. Wright. Huh? Would you mind coming with me? I'll prove that these thick-rimmed glasses of mine aren't just for show. Let's go. Science awaits us. Okay, then. Sure, Emma. Why not? I mean, it's not like we can do anything else anyway. You know, I really don't think we should worry about the police department murder. There wasn't even a body found there. Who cares? Of course it was our victim who was killed at the department. And my sister would never do such a thing. I know it. That oil drum. Was it empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Hmm. My sister erasing evidence at the crime scene? Never! Even though she says they don't get along, Emma really likes her sister. That's not it at all. It's just... We're both professionals at what we do, and I trust her. Big words for a high school student. And how'd you know what I was saying when I was thinking to myself? Well, whether there were bloodstains or not, the water in that oil drum washed it all away. <laughs> Ignore the strength of my science at your own peril, Mr. Wright. Huh? What's that grin for? This situation calls for one thing, and that is... Luminol testing fluid! L Luminol? Blood is sticky stuff, you know? You can't just wash it away with a little water. Even if you can't see it, it's still there. But wouldn't the police have already done those tests? Never trust anyone eyes, anyone's eyes but your own, Mr. Wright. Just give it a try. M me? Why do I have to do it? I'm a miner. I can't even drink yet. We're testing bloodstains with this stuff, not drinking it. Here, look. I'll lend you these glasses. Huh? You got an extra pair of those things? Test for blood reaction. Just spray the luminol on it. Like this, see? Oh, whoops. Hold on. I need to switch screens. That's not it. There we go. Touch the screen to spray it on. Okay, let's find us some blood stains. Alright. Time for some forensics testing. Well, it was over by the floor, so let's see. Oh, yep. Look, blood. I can't believe I got that, like, first fucking try. <laughs> oh, I had to click on it again. I can see your eyes shine behind those glasses. So this is a blood stain? Uh, it's so... Uh, Emma, you're shaking. It's just, this is my first time seeing real blood. Scientific investigation in action. Okay, well, we definitely know this is a blood stain. But doesn't something strike you as odd? Specifically speaking, of course. Uh, scientifically speaking, of course. What's odd about this scientifically? Let's see. I would think that it's the amount of blood that's odd. The perpetrator and Detective Goodman fought here, right? Don't you think there'd be a little more blood? I definitely think so. I mean... Look at all the blood on the sole of the victim's shoe. It's strange. If they fought here, there'd have to be more blood stains than this. Uh, hey, Mr. Wright. See how I'm marking up the floor plans when we find a blood stain? Yes, I do. See? I'm pretty handy to have around, right? 
Uh, yeah, that's very useful information to have. I saved up my allowance to buy this. <laughs> of course you did, Emma. Of course you did. <laughs> we can't be sure that the police will reveal all their evidence in court. Sometimes they fail to mention evidence that doesn't fit with their view of the case. And we'll drag that hidden evidence out into the light of day. Yeah! It feels like we're really investigating a crime now, doesn't it? This luminol stuff is going to come in handy. Huh? Oh, fuck you. I was wondering... I wonder how that fluid of yours really act to a nice deli box. Miss Star! You only trust your own eyes, hmm? Not bad, you two. This day-old deli box is on the house. Day-old? Ew, ew, I don't want day-old meat. That's disgusting. Sorry, it's just that kind of lead-in doesn't really get my mouth watering. Yeah. Well then. Anyway, let's talk to Miss Star here about today's trial, I guess. You certainly put me in a tight spot today. My apologies, Miss Star, but... No, no, it's okay. It was my fault. Oh, we know. I witnessed everything from that security room right there. But I was afraid I wouldn't sound convincing enough, you see. I was wrong to think that. I'm sorry. Sorry, you lied on the witness stand. That's unforgivable. Little girl, don't forget what's important here. Even if the place I witnessed the events from was different, I still saw what I saw. I saw Chief Prosecutor Skye stab a man in cold blood, and that testimony still stands. Ah. Uh, I swear it on my honor as a detective. She stabbed Goodman! I know this photograph has something important to tell us, but what? Well, let's ask her about Detective Star. So, you're a detective? So, you were a detective, weren't you, Miss Star? Yes. It was a long time ago. Well, two years ago. No matter how hardened the criminal when they faced me... They coughed it up. Coughed it up? They confessed. They babbled like babies. You know, I may seem like a demon sometimes, but I can be an angel, too. I wouldn't doubt it. Every day I dragged the dirt out of the mouths of suspect after suspect, and before long they called me... The Cough-Up Queen. Oh, and here I thought someone had gotten food poisoning from your lunches. <laughs> Fucking Emma. <laughs> God damn it, Emma. You know, I, I gotta say, she actually looks pretty cute with her glasses on. Even though she's like, what, 15? I probably send weird to you people. But ha, joke's on you, I'm 17. Huh. And you were let go? Er, uh, fired? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if these prim and proper prosecutors hadn't let me go, I'd still be one today. It's all because of that case. The SL9 incident. SL... SL... Wait. She doesn't mean... Ooh, we gotta show her something then. Let us show her the victim's note. Because, hell, it mentions the SL9. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this? SL9 incident. On that knife. And on that note, Goodman. Goodman was the head detective on, detective on that case, you know. Yeah. I cannot speak right now. I need some water. Ah. There we go. Really? That knife was as evidence from that case. The murder weapon. It was due for transfer the very day that Goodman was killed. As I suspected. SL9 isn't over. Not yet! Do you think you could tell us more about the SL9 incident? I mean, we know nothing about it. So, we might as well... Oh. Uh, what? Oh, okay. So we have to, uh... Hmm. Let's see. So now we have to show the crime scene, apparently. 
are the floor plans. Could you take a look at this? Oh wait, that was the wrong thing. What's the... Oh, the crime photo. Damn it! Exactly my point to you. Well, my thoughts to you, Phoenix. Anyway, about the crime photo, not the floor plans. If you think about it, I could have taken that picture from the guard room. But even I get flustered sometimes. So you went straight to the scene of the crime. And climbed the chain link fence in an effort to stop the murder? That's when I took this photo, yes. In other words, five minutes after the crime. Those five minutes are the whole problem. The hole in my testimony, as it were. The five minutes weren't the problem, Miss Star. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. What? You lying was the problem. <laughs> Listen, little girl. I've had my testimony disregarded before, and I wasn't going to have it disregarded again. Just like that time. That time. Maybe we can ask her about that time now. Yes, we can. Let's ask her about the SL9. That's when I learned the truth. We're nothing to them. Disposable. Disposable? Two years ago, it was the biggest case I'd ever handled. The police and the prosecutors were desperate for decisive evidence. So they didn't solve it? On the contrary, it was solved quite cleanly. The criminal was caught and... executed. Executed? Yes, the criminal got what was coming to him. It doesn't get any cleaner than that. The only problem was, they never did find decisive evidence. Not even a little. What? But the criminal was executed, right? Evidence. Of a sort. Made up evidence. What? You mean they ex executed someone with fabricated evidence? The best part came several months after the trial. Every detective involved in the case was dealt with. Some were demoted to patrolmen. Others found themselves out of a job. And you were one of those? Myself and one other person you know well. Wait, could it be? It has to be him. Exactly. Officer Jake Marshall. He's on security detail in the police department, isn't he? Huh. This is, uh, really something. As professional detectives, we investigated that case from every angle. Jake was particularly determined. And then it was over. And he was demoted. However, he hasn't forgotten, and neither have I. You haven't forgotten, SL9? There was another side to that case, a hidden side. That's what we're after now. And no one up, to, up in their fancy offices can stop us. Wait! Those lunches you sell! There's only one reason I come to sell lunches in this accursed office. I come here to meet old friends. Boyfriends that can help me investigate. Miss Starr's old boyfriends. How many does she have, anyway? Just one of the detectives of this on the case have disappeared. We find new evidence. There has to be a connection. So, rookie. What? It seems like you're serious about investigating this case. Yes. Then you should take this. Uh, Salisbury steak lunch? I know a certain guy who might help you find... Who might help you if you tempt him with this treat. Okay, thank you for the steak lunch, Miss Star. Um, Miss Star? Officer Marshall, is he your... Uh, are you his... Are you going out? Why do you want to know? I was just wondering what happened to him. A long time ago, when he was helping my sister do cases, he was so nice. He got along so well with my sister, it made me jealous. And he was nice to me too back then. This would be when Officer Marshall was a detective. But now... Now he's so cold. Jake and I are merely cooperating on this investigation. We're putting the past to rest, as it were. Nothing more than that. I... I see. Thank you. Officer Jake Marshall. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway... Let's go, uh... I guess let's go to the police department. Huh. No, he's gonna go to Edgeworth's office. 
February 23rd, Police Department, Entrance. It's even busier here today than it was yesterday. The detectives are running around so fast they're blurring. I suppose it makes sense. A detective did get killed in their own department. So, the evidence room. The scene of the crime. According to the pamphlet we got at the front desk, here it is. She's like a kid in an amusement park. Ooh, a real crime scene. Let's go take a look. Okay. I guess there's no reason not to. Uh, let's go. Where do we have to go? Hmm. Okay, let's go to the security guard station. The only place we haven't gone to yet. And oh my, I wonder whose desk this is. Oh, right, he's a security guard now. What's the decor in this place? It's very eccentric. According to the pamphlet, this is the guard station for the evidence room. So beyond that door is the evidence room, the scene of the crime. It sure seems that way. Oh. Oh. What's wrong? It's those cacti. They're so prickly. So imposing. It's hard to think straight. She can't handle the cacti. Stay out of the desert. What I want to know is, if this is the guard station, where's the guard? I have a feeling I know who this guard is, is already. Me too. Anyway. Uh, well, let's examine the door to the uh, evidence room. Might as well try to go in. The evidence room is beyond that door. Let's just walk in. Is that really the best idea, Emma? It won't open. You thought it'd open? I think we need someone's permission to go in there first. Alright, so still, nothing we can do here. So let's just go back to the entrance. This place is charged with frantic energy, as always. Huh? Wasn't that... One steak lunch, please! Oh, it's you. Detective Gumshoe! Now's no time for chit-chat, pal. I'm a busy man. What I really need is a steak lunch from Lunchland. Oh, you mean one of these? Actually, it's not for sale. Oh, poor Gumshoe. I think I just heard the sound of his heart breaking. Now's no time for despair. We've caught our criminal. We, now we just need... Now we just need evidence. The criminal? You mean... You heard about the stabbing in the police department evidence room, pal. On that, on the same day that a detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department? And the perpetrator, do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. Flashback. It's the biggest sc scandal to hit the station in ages. Everything's topsy-turvy. But Detective Gumshoe, who was it? Listen, pal, all I know is I need me a steak lunch, prano. Standing around here talking is gonna fill my belly. Well, wait, don't leave. If you wanna know more, head on down to the detention center, pal. Questioning should be over, so I figure he's down there having a good cry. Later. Good cry. You ran off to the evidence room. Well, this investigation is off to a running start. Well, I think I actually remember who they arrested as the, uh, perpetrator of the incident. Oh, jeez. Someone I really don't want to deal with. And someone whose voice is just going to kill me. Still, I do feel better about things. A little. I mean, they caught the person who stabbed Detective Goodman, didn't they? Uh, yeah. I guess they did. Best not to, best to not go too far down that road right now. Things will just get confusing. Ow! What was that? Sir, that's what I'm saying! Me, a perpetrator! I'd say I was the perpetrator against, sir! That's what I'd say! Of course. Oh, uh, hi! Greetings, sir! Wait, I know who you are. Excuse me, but is, uh, Mr. Edgeworth anywhere on the premises? I'm not reading all that again. Officer Meekins, you're a guard here at the detention center? No, sir, I'm not, sir. I'm a lost little lost patrolman like a little lost lamb, sir. Oh, I get it. You're here to deliver a report? No, sir, I, uh, how should I say this? Wait, he isn't... Is he? You, Officer Meekins, you didn't... Did you? Uh... Ow. What? What? Now this is an unexpected turn of events. 
Well then. Might as well talk about him. Talk to him. Sir, I'm a patrolman with General Affairs, sir. Sir! Ow, I can hear you fine, Officer Meekins. I had some business that, that, that day, sir. And so I went to the evidence room, sir. The card office in front of the room was empty, sir. So normally there's a guard at the evidence room. That's right, sir. Because evidence is kept in the evidence room, sir. Now the security officer was not an officer marshal. Marshal? Then, sir, I happened to glance at the security room monitor. That's when I saw him, sir. A suspicious person in the evidence room. A suspicious person, sir! A suspicious person, yow! What the heck is this guy doing? So what happened then? After that, sir, I... I... Everything went white. I saw red. I blacked out. And when I came to, I was here, in the detention center. How long were you out? Days? Um, might I ask, what happened to your hand? Sir, there is no one to bandage me, sir. So I did what I could to wrap it up, sir. A bandage on his hand? Just like Miss Sky. Yet another similarity between this case and the one at the prosecutor's office. First things first, tell us how you hurt your hand. Let's ask about that before the victim. And your hand, that happened when Detective Goodman was stabbed. Well, you see, sir, I, uh... Don't you think you should just confess? But sir, sir, but there was nothing I could do. Nothing you could do? Sir, to tell the truth, sir, what happened? When the detective pointed that knife at me, I just hollered, sir. The next thing I knew, I was unconscious. The next thing you knew, you were... Huh? Then when I opened my eyes... I was alone in the evidence room, sir. All alone. Alone because... Because the different government had disappeared. What? Then when I looked down, I was gushing blood from my hand, sir. Oh, the shock, oh, the sorrow. Can you imagine how I felt? The victim's body disappeared? This is really weird now. And that's some story. Regretfully, we still have to ask about the victim. Ugh. Um, I don't mean to pry, but you are the perpetrator, correct? You killed Detective Bruce Goodman in the evidence room, right? Sir, please don't look at me with those sad puppy dog eyes, sir! I don't even know if I can keep up this voice, oh my god. If you have to label me as a per persecutor or victim, sir, then label me victim! Um, I would, but you happen to be detention. And alive and well at, at that. Ah, oh, yes, well, that's true, sir. I suppose you could say that. Did you know the victim, Detective Goodman? Oh, sir, if I had to label him as a stranger, a total stranger, I'd say he leans heavily on the total stranger side. So, you didn't know him? Sir, I work in a tiny department devoid of light of, or other creature comforts. I don't know any detectives. So, if he was a total stranger, why did you stab him? Sir, I had no intention of killing him, sir. None. Nor do I have any recollection of killing him, sir. At least someone around here is more confused than I am. Anyway, what we're supposed to do now is show him uh, Goodman's ID. Maybe it'll jog his memory of the event. God. Um, do you think you're gonna take a look at this? <laughs> hey! That's it, sir, that's it, that's it! That's what? My head was a blank until this very moment. But sir, now I remember, I remember, sir. You mean you remember what happened? Correct! That card! That card was the cause of it all! This ID card? Exactly, sir! That's exactly it! Nothing could be more exact, sir! Nothing! I'd better pry into this one a little deeper. Ah! <laughs> oh, this is killing me. Can you tell me what it is you do remember? Well, sir, you might say I'm a little lo a lost little patrolman. A lost little lamb, if you will. I didn't know Mr. Detective Goodman, who was in the evidence room. And that's why and that's why you thought he looked suspicious. So I entered the evidence room and asked the man to display his ID card. Well, that sounds pretty much by the book so far. That's right, sir. That's what I've been trying to tell you. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing! Somebody pointed a knife at me! 
What? Sir, I assure you I was as flustered as you are right now. So I whooped and le leapt at him. Detective Goodman pointed a knife at him? Do others and do unto others before they do unto you. My own father's words, sir. What happened then? Well, my eyes, sir, everything went white. When I woke, I was here. Right. Well, let's talk about the reason for arrest, then. So, Officer Meekins, why was it that they arrested you? What do you mean, Emma? Let's look at what we know. Now, Officer Meekins didn't know Detective Goodman, and the victim whom he met at the scene of the crime didn't show his ID card. In other words, we have n in other words, we have no way of knowing if it, the victim was really the victim. And if this body just disappeared from the evidence room, we don't even know if anyone actually died. That's it, sir. That that's what I wanted to say. That is, I did say something along those lines. Huh? But you still ended up here. They told me that it had to be him, sir, on that day at that time. That if Goodman was definitely in the evidence room. That's what they said. But, you don't remember the events clearly. No, but the videotape is quite clear. Huh? Videotape? The security camera. The crime, my crime, the crime I swore to stamp out. It's there, it's me, on, it's on tape. And you wait until now to tell us this? I'm sorry, sorry sir. I'll hand over my badge, I don't deserve it. N no thanks, I have my own. Well, I guess we better go check out the scene of the crime. I mean, hell, better than talking to this fucking guy. <clears throat> Let's go to the criminal affairs department. Hey, Mr. Wright, look who's standing at the head of head detective's desk. It's Chief Gant. Are you sure this is all? Hmm. <laughs> you know what it means if there is anything missing. Sir, I'm sure it's mo—it's most likely totally perfect. We checked the dra we checked the drawers, the can, the lockers. Bleh. We checked the drawers, the, the pillowcases behind the funerals, the coffee machine. I see. Well, if anything does turn up, you call me right away. Deal? Y yes, sir. We'll scour the place again, sir. The head detective looks a little flustered. Ah, <laughs> right, though, my boy. How you been? Swim much? Oh ho ho, Chief Gant, reporting for duty, sir. Why are you saluting him, Mr. Wright? <laughs> well, <laughs> seemed like the right thing to do. I don't know. Um, is that Earth going to be okay? Oh, were they? Oh, you know. Oh, you know, they're doing a little inquiry committee with him. Sounds like an inquisition. Yep, well, we've had no end of trouble with the boy since last year. You mean, the incident on Gord Lake? It doesn't look good having one of our top people sitting in the defendant's seat. Now, you got someone else found guilty in that case, right, right, oh? Von Karma. A legend he was, undefeated in his 40-year career. But in court, you fixed it so he was caught for forging evidence. Oh, wait, I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. In any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of turmoil, you might say. Why, they'd do just about anything to restore their reputation. Now, depending on what that inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. W what? Hmm, that doesn't sound good. It's downright odd, I tell you. I mean, it happened at exactly the same time. The murder at the prosecutor's office. Scientifically speaking, it's impossible. Yes, but that's what the evidence is saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time. That's what it says. What evidence is this? Now, now, Righto, I can't just give away all our secrets like that. And this in particular, well, it's a sensi it's a little sensitive, and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much anyway. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff. Secrets can't stand them. But you know, it's a full-time job just keeping the head detective's trap shut. Ah, he was the one you were picking on earlier. Huh? You saw that? Whoops! I wonder what it was he wanted the head detective to do. Let's see if we can kind of discreetly ask him. Alright. So, we have to examine the head detective now. Oh man, we're examining some dude. I guess that's him right there. Ooh, sorry I had to see that. 
Uh, what exactly did the chief of police want you to do? Well, see over there? That's Goodman's desk. He wanted me to check it for anything that might be a clue. It took away every last piece of garbage in the trash can. So nothing belonging to Detective Goodman is still here? Of course not. Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Sure, why not? It's not really- it's not important. He didn't finish writing it. It's a lost item report, but it's only half complete. A lost item? Did Detective Goodman lose something? The date on it is February 21st. I'll make a note of that, just in case. Hmm. Hmm, that's a little weird. Try to get a quick look around the crime scene. Let's see. Alright. So we need to get into the evidence room, so let's talk about Gant, about uh, getting into the... Well, getting in there. Actually, I was wondering if I could ask you a favor. Hmm? Well, I never thought the day would come when Raito asked me for help. I was wondering if we could investigate the evidence room. That fucking gaze. Pierce into your soul. Now, Raito. Actually, I'm sorry, I don't need to investigate at all. Right, though, please, do I look like a selfish man? Huh? Heck, if anyone asked me, sir, can I borrow $50, I'd give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's content. Knock yourself out. It just goes to show you, you never know until you ask. And for you, and for you here, you can borrow this. Huh? Hey, this is a detective's ID card, isn't it? That's a special card for guests, so don't lose it. Yes, sir, it's an honor. You just run along now and do your best. Now, later, folks! Hmm. Seems like a unusually cheerful fella. <laughs> Looks pretty cool on my lapel, doesn't it? Just, just think, a real ID. You seem... happy? Yes, sir! Because, sir, we get to go into the evidence room now, sir! I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, back to the entrance. Gotta go to the security guard office, and we gotta go into the evidence room. Oh wait, oh no, we have to examine this now. <sighs> the evidence room is beyond that door, and we have the ID card from Chief Gant. Let's just walk in. It won't open. Aha! The card reader is turned off, see? What is that security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, well, what's made my Bambina sky so gray? Hey there, Marshal. Officer Marshal. Somehow I knew. What's that somehow I knew look for? As you may have surmised, this here is my saloon. Um, we're here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw! That card you got on there on your chest. That's better than a sheriff's badge in these parts. Yeehaw? Well, what are you standing there for? Get along, little doggies. The crime scene's awaiting. Look at the card reader's on again. While we're here, I was wondering if we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I got no mind to tangle with your, you hombres. You're busy, then. Did I say that? I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. Actually, you said you had no mind to tangle with us hombres. Huh. Well, I think I know what'll get him talking. Hey, Marshal. Here you go. Have a steak lunch. That smell. Ah, reminds me of Texas. So, Officer Marshal, you're from Texas? No, I just saw a special on television the other day. This for my baby? Uh, yeah, Miss Starr. What's this? What? What's wrong? A filet steak lunch. I see, I see. I don't see. I wonder what it means. Okay, then. Alright, Bambina. You win. Ask him what anything. Finally, it seems like... He's willing to talk. Alright. Let's talk to him, then. Talking about the guard office. Officer Marshall, you're in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job, and I'm grateful for it. A actually, Officer Meekins at the detention center told us. 
Ah, uh, that poor little doggy. Poor guy. I keep getting his name wrong, calling him meekly. He told us something. He said that when the stabbing occurred, you weren't at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this. But since I got demoted from detective two years ago... Well, he might not look it, but I lost my fire for the job, you know? So, what were you doing around 5.15 when the murder took place? Well, I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed, Zippy. Note, he was riding down the highway on his horse named Zippy. It's not a horse, Emma. There's no need for people here, anyhow. These newfangled machines do a bang-up job of keeping an eye on the place. You mean the security camera system? I don't take the machines much. Kind of like that stew stewed broccoli they sneak in next to your steak, you know? <laughs> True. Miss Starr told us something. She said that you were a detective until two years ago. It was always my dream to be a raw hide wrangler on the scene of crime. That's all gone now. Like a drinking hole in a prairie fire. You're still investigating the SL9 incident with Miss Starr, aren't you? That was my case. It's all solved on the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. That's all there is to it. What kind of case was it anyway? We've never we've heard the main name so many times, but nobody actually tells us what happened. There are some things you're better off not knowing, Bambina. Anyway, that case is officially dead as of two days ago. Two days ago? The day of our case. That's right. The evidence transferals. Edrith is talking about the transferals too. Hmm. Let's talk about the security system. I know what maybe two of the machines in here do. Only two of them? There must be a dozen. Like I said, Bambina, me and machines, well... I like them about as much as I like stewed cauliflower with my steaks. The easiest ones to understand are these huge security cameras. <sighs> Those are the ones Officer Me Meekins mentioned. Nothing happens, then the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. Now, Officer Meekins and Detective Goodman, are they on one of those tapes? I reckon that might be. You're the security guard, and you reckon? One more thing. When you go into the evidence room, you need an ID card. Thus, the card reader by the door. The car reader leaves a record of every ID card passed through. Hmm. Hmm. Who's 77777? Hey, I've seen that somewhere before. Sorry, Bambina. I can't show you more than that. Huh? I haven't heard whether this is related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. Maybe there's some way I can prove that record is tied to the stabbing. Well... Sorry, but could, could you explain what this whole transferal thing is about? We keep only evidence from solved cases in this room. They're kept here under the presiding detective's supervision for two years. So we can reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake, see? So I missed the evidence after two years. It goes to sleep forever in the underground vault the police station. That's what we call transferal. We do it every February. I see now. Transferal is like a funeral for old cases. Two years after a case is solved, it's closed forever. Dead. Never to re be reopened again. Never to be reinvestigated. That happened to the SL9 to SL9 two days ago. Hmm. Well, let us show uh, Marshall Goodman's ID. I don't know what good that's gonna do because oh well, I'm just reading off a walkthrough. See this? This is the victim's ID card. Ah, the one that was on the ground, in the parking lot. The number on this is five eight four two one eight nine. Officer Marshall, show us the ID number on that ID card record. Yeah, there it is. 5.14 p.m. Look, the fourth number. It's a perfect match. It was used at 5.14, right before the stabbing. What's more, there's only one of them cards in the world. So when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. But wait, what did Officer Meekin say? Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked that man to display his ID card. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing! Suddenly he pointed a knife at me! 
If he had his ID card, then why would he have pointed a knife at Officer Meekins? All right, compadre, you win. I guess I can give you this ID card record. Sure, I'll prove to be useful, Jake. Oh, goddamn, I'm fucking tired. Oh, let me do this at like 10:30 at night. <laughs> All right, I've got an idea. Maybe I should show this list to other people with IDs here. I will later. But for now, let's just get our asses in the evidence room. Hmm. February 23rd, evidence room, sector 3. It's quiet. The investigation must be over here. So this is the evidence room? It really is kind of like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. Nice try, Mr. Wright. You can't scare me. Oh, Emma. Yo, gumshoe! Ah! Wow! <laughs> um. Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I wouldn't recommend going around smacking ghosts on the head, pal. So is it true what I heard? Righto, please. Do I look like a selfish man? Heck, if anyone asked me, sir, can I borrow fifty dollars? I'd give them fifty dollars, no problem. This happened ten seconds ago. Like, uh, nearly a minute ago. Why are you remembering this? Why do you have the need to flash back to that? Yeah, it's true. So Chief of Police Gant will loan anyone fifty bucks? Even me? <laughs> oh my god, come shoe. <laughs> yeah, after all these salary cuts, I imagine that you want fifty bucks from the Chief. Oh, so that's what you were talking about. Actually, I was put in charge of the investigation for today. Just for today? Boss for a day. But guess what? You got permission from the chief, so now you're boss for a day. Gee, thanks. First of all, you'll want to have this. No, oh, thanks. Alright, so let's talk to, uh... Uh, Gumshoe, then. Judge for a day. So, Detective Gumshoe, you're boss for the day? That's right. It's an honor. After all, the murder took place right here in the police department. But if you're boss, why are you all alone? Where are your underlings? They're using our findings from yesterday's investigation to prepare for the trial. In other words, Detective Gumshoe got kicked out of the investigation again. I'm adamant, though. I'm going to take control and put this case to rest. And in my own evidence locker, pal. You have a locker in here too, Detective Gumshoe? Heh, <laughs> of course. I am a detective, after all. They gave me a locker that only I can open, pal. Only you can open? Let's talk about Edgeworth. <laughs> I'll always believe in Mr. Edgeworth, no matter what happens. So, Mr. Edgeworth is the one with the Inquiry Committee right now. So, Mr. Edgeworth is with the Inquiry Committee right now, right? They're trying to figure out who's responsible for the mess up in court today. I see. I guess this is what you call fate. Mr. Everworth just can't get away from that case. That case? Yeah, that case. The SL9 incident, of course. That was the, from the that was the beginning of the end for Mr. Edgeworth. Maybe we can get him to tell us more about that case. Well, let's talk about the safe. They says only he can open. It's intriguing. This place is more high tech than you might think. Every locker is fixed so that only one detective can open it. Using this ID card. Well, that's the thing, pal. ID cards can be lost. Why, I'm on my third card since entering the force already. That sounds like a lot. Yes, but even I can't lose my own right hand. Right hand? Oh, you mean your fingerprint. Exactly, pal. The lock for each locker is coated with a fingerprint. And that's the only locker we can open. Funny, they look like normal lockers. These are the lightest model. There's a trick to the handles, see? The handles? On the other side of the handles is a sensor, and if the wrong person touches it... Zap! You get a shock! If that's what happened, my hand would be black and smoking every day. In any case, the locks aren't that, that obvious. There's even some people in the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. Hmm. That's something. Hmm. <laughs> anyway. Let us show Gumshoe, uh, the victim's note. I don't exactly know why, but, you know, walkthrough tells me to. Detective Goodman's note, and that switchblade knife. I bet Edgeworth was the most surprised of anyone. Because of the SL9 connection? 
That was Mr. Edgeworth's first big case, you know, two years ago. That was the first time the world knew Edgeworth was a man to be feared. But why would evidence from that case turn up now? I guess it's not over, pal. Maybe there are some loose ends left on that case. It's quite possible. So let's talk about it. Now that was a bloody violent case. Violent? So it was a murder? A serial killing? A serial killing? Maybe I don't want to get involved in this after all. But the killer made a mistake and Edgeworth built his case around that to nab him. And this was two years ago? That put Mr. Edgeworth right in the spotlight. And started the rumor mill. Rumors about forged evidence? I suppose it was to be cleaned up with a transfer all the other day. It was the last job he ever did. Detective Goodman, that is. Huh? What do you mean? Detective Goodman was the detective in charge of the SL9 incident, see? So, so... The switchblade knife. The victim took the knife out of the evidence locker himself. I... Uh, damn it! Hey, what are you impersonating me for, pal? My bad, gumshoe. The victim took the knife out of the evidence locker himself. That's quite odd. <coughs> hmm. So, now... Uh, we have to show Gumshoe the victim's ID card. That's the victim, Detective Goodman's ID card. These days, everything's cards and secret numbers. I can never relax. That's only because you always lose your card. I always forget my secret number, too. Scary, huh? My face should be ID enough. What's the world coming to? Detective Gumshoe, rebel against, rebel against the system. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, the ID... Damn it, not the ID card, the ID card record, damn it. That's what I wanted to do. Could you take a look at this? This is the ID card record of the people who came in here on the day of the stabbing. Ah, I heard the rumors. So it was Goodman who came in here at the time of the murder. Whoa! What is it? <laughs> that second number. It's not your ID number, is it Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth! What? The second number on this list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. What? What? Are you kidding me? Edgeworth? What was he doing here? Why would Edgeworth has come, have come to the evidence room? Okay. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, now we have to examine. Let's see. Actually, there's something odd. What is this right here? There's something sticking out of here. It looks like a shirt. I guess it must be evidence for some case. I never took a gumshoe put this here. There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of slob. I'm not res- Oh, whoops. I haven't been recording the top screen. <laughs> Oops. I'm not responsible for the evidence that here. That's Ed. I bet that evidence locker was open recently. How do you know? If you leave things hanging out like that, the evidence gets dirty or ripped. The guard checks on that kind of stuff and notifies the detective responsible. How many times have I- How many times have I had him breathing down my neck about some silly evidence? Sounds like Detective Gumshoe leaves evidence hanging out a lot, too. I bet he doesn't tuck his shirt under that trench coat, either. If you're gonna talk behind someone's back, don't do it right in front of him, pal. <laughs> Poor Gumshoe. Uh, anyway. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so now let's go to the right, and, uh, what's this glove doing here? Someone left a glove here, but only one. Detective Gumshoe, Detective Gu Damn it, again, I forgot to switch screens. Detective Gumshoe, maybe? There you go, pal, making me out to be some kind of absent-minded detective. That's evidence from the case, you know? You mean SL9? It does have a tag on it. Hmm. Okay. It's not an incident. Hmm. Okay, so let's examine the open locker behind the police tape. Look, this one's open! And there's an indicator tag still stuck stuck on it still. That locker is covered with Detective Goodman's fingerprint. Detective Goodman's locker. Are you sure it's okay to leave it open like that? Well, it'd be hard to get it open again if we closed it. It's empty. They must have taken the contents elsewhere. Hmm. 
Alright. So that's Goodman's locker. Yeah. Now I'm wondering, what's this stuff underneath it, too? Wow, someone must have broken something big to make all these pieces. Detective, De Detective Gumshoe, perhaps? There you go, pal, making me out to be some kind of hooligan. Damn, uh, uh, Phoenix is just relentless with Gumshoe today. That's apparently from The Case. The Case? The SL9 incident, pal. See the sticker on one of the pieces there? Another piece of SL9 evidence. Might as well check it out closer. I wonder what shape these pieces were in before whatever it was broke. Ugh. You wanna try to put it back together? Heh, <laughs> good luck, pal. That's no job for amateurs. Well, I spent a good three hours on that before I had to give up. That's why I always carry around a tube of glue. Well, this piece looks like the bottom. Let's try putting the rest in place. Alright. Hmm. Let's see. What am I trying to do here? Oh, I just have to match it up with the bottom one. So... Is this... Hmm. Is there a friend that matches up with what's on the bottom? Um... Whoa, is that blood? That's not it, no. Uh, okay, that's all the friends we have. Uh, hmm. Oh, actually, there's steps right here telling me what to do. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Does that go there? No. Um. Hmm. Maybe now it does. Yep. Hmm. Alright. Four. Yeah, that looks right. Alright. Hmm. Is this it? No. Hmm. Oh, there we go. I think we're starting to get this. Now next, after one is eight. Uh, that looks right. No. There we go. Hmm. It's starting to take shape a little nicely. Uh, yeah, that looks right. No, it doesn't. That's not it either. That must be it. No. Man, I'm fucking stupid. How the hell am I... S what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Is that it? No, I already did that. Oh, or maybe I'm doing the wrong fragment, you know? <laughs> uh, let's see. No, it's not two. Oh, it's... Three. You know, because that looks right. I'm fucking stupid. Uh, then comes two. No, that's not it. There we go. And the last fragment, of course. No. Oh, we're missing a fragment. Huh? Well, I think we did it, but some of the pieces are missing. That only took me two minutes to do. The problem was finishing it. Were some pieces stolen? I bet they were missing to begin with. Still, it doesn't look like the most stable kind of jar. I kind of understand how it got broken. Hmm. Very weird jar indeed. Hmm. Alright, now we have to do, let us 
present some luminol. Allow me to say one thing, speaking as a detective. If I see a piece of evidence I know nothing about, I say nothing. Nothing. Okay, so that's... Uh, uh wait, what? Hmm. Hmm. Alright, hey, let's see. What do I do? I'm not testing. Okay, I have to spray luminol on this, apparently. Uh, let's see, how do I do this now? He yeah, already did this. Hmm. Um. Oh, here we go. So let's try spraying the locker. Oh, boy, what do you know? There's a bloody handprint. <gasps> Why am I getting a reaction here? There's no reason for the murderer to touch the spot if you fled out the door. This might be something significant. Hey, that's some pretty amazing stuff you got there, pal. What, this? It's called luminol testing fluid. Where'd you get your hands on that? Huh? I have to get some too. I'll just borrow 50 bucks from the chief. Where do you get this, Emma? I always buy it by mail order. Well, I better jot this down on the floor plans. Wow. Alright, so now I have to pan right and spread the upper locker too. Oh, you know, right here. Anyway, more bloody handprints. I knew it, this is someone's right hand print. What? What's the, ma what's the matter, detective? This locker, it's mine. It's yours? Please. You have to help me, when they come to take me away. <laughs> Promise you'll testify that I wouldn't harm a fly. You'll do that for me, won't you, pals? This is an important clue. I'll jot it down on the floor plans. I'm counting on you guys. Believe me, you can't trust the police. What? But you're a detective. <laughs> God damn it, gumshoe. Say we can't trust the police. Huh. Alright. Alright, so let's spray, uh, what appears to be, oh, of course, there's blood here, too, on what appears to be the crime scene. There must have been a massive amount of blood here. I've never seen so much before. I'm not a professional. What's your opinion, Detective? Hmm. Pale blue blood. Maybe Detective Goodman was actually an alien! This proves that something really happened in front of the slocker. I'm out of water. I'll make a note of it on the floor plans. Hey, if you don't want my opinion, you should have asked. You shouldn't have asked. <laughs> hey, pal, look at the time. Is this something you need to go do? It's just that Mr. Ezra's inquiry committee should be letting out soon. I'm going to give them my report for the day. It might help, you know. R report? You mean the note written on the back of that flyer? That one says nothing but no problems. This is nothing but no problems. Hey, it's Mr. Ezra we're talking about. I'm sure he could use a report like this. I believe in him. Who needs enemies when you've got friends like Detective Gumshoe? I'm off, pal. Later. I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say, too. So we better go see Edgeworth back at his prosecutor's office room. Oh, <coughs> uh, what I wouldn't... Why didn't I get a second bottle of water when I came up here to record? I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> oh well. Anyway. Ugh, such a long trip. February 23rd, High Prosecutor's Office. Room 1202. What the hell? What are you doing here? Ah, oh, guests! My apologies. Oh, it's you. Have we met somewhere? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, I beg your leave. So long. Is Edgeworth here? There, standing by the window, a teacup in his hand. Ah, oh, it's you. 
He has the hotel bring him tea service? Mr. Edgeworth, you're back from the district prosecutor's office inquiry? Precisely. By the way, Detective Gumshoe is looking for you. Oh, yes. He brought me some information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently, a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to conceal me somehow. Uh, I think the report is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I think this whole thing is really taking its toll on him. It clearly is. Anyway, let us... Uh, oh, thank God, I'm close to finishing this off. Uh, let's talk to the, about the Inquiry Committee. So how'd the Inquiry Committee go? Actually, they decide to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communications error during the investigation. <sighs> concealing evidence? Yes, apparently there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning. You were lucky this time. Again. Again? I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. Right, SL9. Are you okay for the trial tomorrow? Well, I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney. However... Something happened? They gave control of the investigation over to the police department. The police department? Yes, any further investigation for this case will, directed, will be directed by the chief of police, Gant. I can do nothing but wait for his results. I see. Why, I ask you, why? All along, I've only done what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still. Wow, I've never seen him this out of sorts. Hmm. That sure is something. Uh, anyway, we might as well ask him about the card report, you know, because his number is on it. Oh, right. I better check this now. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage. Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, that's true. Why? Mr. Edgeworth? Please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go by Chief Garn, no less. The Chief of Police? He wanted evidence for a certain for a case that was wrapped that wrapped up half a year ago. He told me he wanted to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. But it was solved, right? It would have to be the evidence it would have to be if the evidence was already filed. The chief is never one to explain himself. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case it was? I can't say. I re it really has nothing to do with the current case. Now I'm curious about this other case. I better make a note of it. Unrelated evidence. Stubborn as always. I told you this has nothing to do with the current case. But I'm gonna do it anyway. You know me, Edgy. You know me. Oh. Okay, so let's show him the victim's note. Because, you know, that's just the thing to show to everyone. The SL9 thing. I know you. You've probably got a hold, some, a hold of some information already, right? It all has to do with that case you're on. The SL9 incident. And some dark suspicion you were wrapped up in. You are the, ma you are the, ma you are the man who revived the worst memory of my life, as I recall. I figured I'd be telling you about this sooner or later. Bad memory. He's talking about the murder in the elevator. DL6. Okay, Azrath, why don't you tell me about it? Tell me the truth. <clears throat> the SL9 incident was a heinous serial killing case. The head of investigation was the deputy chief of police at the time, Damon Gant. That wacky old coot was involved in the case two years ago, too, then. Huh. He was the best we had, and it was my first time working with him. I was nervous. Wow, you get nervous, too, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? What I don't know is, why was the deputy chief of police on the investigation? In truth, I used slightly more extreme methods than normal. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, the blood would be on my hands. We went out guilty verdict, and the killer was executed. Wait, you didn't. Of course not. I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to win a trial. However, I do have a code and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma, the chief prosecutor wants to know something. My sister? What? You still working on that scientific investigation? 
Huh? Yes, of course. Why, just today, Mr. Wright and I were using this. Luminol testing fluid. Hmm? Well, then. You might have use for this. Aluminum powder for taking fingerprints! It's been chemically treated for, ba for better adhesion. For me? Are you sure? We are the enemy, you know. I have no say in today's investigation. Do as you will. Edgeworth, I'm really... No need to thank me. Here, take your powder and these fingerprint files for everyone involved. I, uh, thanks. Have you giving these to Detective Gumshoe as well? Okay, then. Apparently Gumshoe doesn't get him. Well, let's get going. One last investigation. Right. I do seem to remember seeing a suspicious handprint somewhere. That is correct. <clears throat> so let's go back to the evidence room and test out that f this fingerprinting stuff on the, uh, print we found on Gumshoe's locker. So that does seem to be a bit suspicious. Oh, <sighs> God. It's such a long trip. This is why I like Dual Destinies better. You can just instantly go from one place to another. You don't have to go from place to place. That's, like, connected. You just go from, like, oh, hey, I'm in the high prosecutor's. Bam! I have an instrument. Even though you don't ever go to the police station or to the uh, prosecutor's office in that game. Just saying, I just finished that game today. Damn, recording this. December 21st. The game's fucking amazing. <laughs> I love it. So many twists! So good! Our investigation turned up a suspicious handprint. Here, in this blood on the detective's evidence locker. Let's use the secret weapon we just borrowed. <laughs> right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So let's choose the finger that will have the left behind the clearest print. That's probably the thumb, or the pointer. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger. Alright. So, probably the pointer finger, I think. Hmm. Okay, now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. I'm starting to get that sparkle in her eyes. First, we sprinkle the aluminum powder around. Huh? How do you do that? Just touch the screen, see? Ah, looks like that did the trick. Aluminum powder adheres completely to the print. Once the powder is well spread, just blow away the excess. Huh? How do I do that? You just blow with your breath. Imagine you're blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. See? Wow, that looks fun. Might take some getting used to, though. It's fine. It won't go up your nose or anything. You just pour the powder on thick and blow away the extra. Those are the basics of finger fingerprinting, Mr. Wright. Not how it works in real life, but yeah, sure. Actually, I'm not sure if my microphone will actually be caught up. Let me just check. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I can't get it to blow. Oh, that's not good. Um, <laughs> uh, hold on, let me just test something real quickly. Okay, I fixed it. And, uh, sorry if this hurts you guys' ears. <laughs> Oh man, it's not it's not going very well. I put too much on. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to feel a little winded. <laughs> oh god. Let me try something else. Alright, let me try this now. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> I just configure it to a... Uh... Oh, whoops. Hold on. Let me just get back to blowing stuff away. Hmm. Oh, well there's our fingerprint. Uh, hold on, let me just increase the pressure of this. Hmm. Yeah, it's gonna take a while for it to blow away. <laughs> hmm. 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 
Alright, so we still need some, like, over here in the center. So I'm just gonna put some all around. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Hmm. So apparently I can't do any more with the, uh, pressure. So this is as fast as the fingerprinting is gonna go with blowing away stuff. <laughs> well, I hope you guys don't mind that. I mean, it's gonna be a little weird, yes, I know. But, hey. That's what you get. Well, that's what I get. Ugh. <sighs> I believe we're almost done with this. I'm just gonna speed this up a little. Hmm. Wait, what? Did I blow away too much? God fucking damn it. So I gotta stop when it's just right. Oh, this will be fun. Let me just redo the entire thing so it's all covered in powder. Oh. I just had to cover it? Yeah, this looks nothing like a fingerprint. I guess it doesn't. What does it mean? I think it means we're out of luck. Out of luck? Handprint must have worn gloves. God damn it. Don't tell me we're wasting our time here. Hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. But it does seem a shame. While we're at it, why don't we look for other prints? Other prints? Looking at the other locker again closely. Seems that there are fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Let's see if we can find a clear print. Hmm, fingerprints outside the blood. Yeah, I do see it now. I don't know why we couldn't see that before. Well, I didn't see that before. Alright. Uh, 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 powder all over the screen. Oh, I accidentally clicked outside the window. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, oops, wrong button. There we go! Yeah, your print's so clear, it's dazzling! Dazzling? Anyway, this print took, over, took a lot of effort to find. Let's match it up right away. So we're not done yet. Oh, this is quite a process. Hmm. Alright. Not knowing who we are. Oh, fuck. She's right. Hmm. Look at the fingerprint we got from Mr. Edgeworth. Point out the person you think left these prints. Huh? How am I supposed to do that? I know who it was. I can make a pretty good guess. The bloody handprint fingerprints are in different places, right? It means that the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. These fingerprints... We most likely find this locker. Who we most likely find in this locker would be Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, they're fucking gumshoes. Huh. Wow, 16 points. That's pretty damn good. Hmm. Aha! So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Something wrong, Mr. Riot? You gave me this so what look. I guess that's probably because I was thinking so what. Okay, so we came up with nothing this time, but there's always next time. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You gotta roll with the punches, Mr. Riot. Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, if I remember correctly, there's one other handprint in this room. Let's check it out. Phoenix is right. Let us check it out. It was the handprint over here. This is where we got a luminol fluid reaction, right? Right. There was a handprint here. Okay, wanna try using this? There, there go our eyes sparkling again. Yeah, let's check for prints. Okay, let's check for prints. That's the spirit. Oh, but I have to warn you about something first. What? The area with the blood was wiped away, right? We only ended up finding we only ended up finding it with using chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped away too. Oh, right. So that means no prints. We said the probability of your hypothesis of your hypothesis is high. Don't ask me. Anyway, we must try to find prints that weren't wiped away. Prints other than the ones left by the bloody hand. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Prints that weren't left by the bloody hand, eh? 
Well, we can still exit. Oh, I know. Whoa, whoa, what was that? I don't see anything, but what's this? I'm getting something here. Hey, fingerprint. Hmm, I gave him my best shot. The kind of result won't get us any matching prints, will it? Doesn't look like we'll get a clearer result from this print. Let's try a different finger then. Hmm. Alright. Ooh, this one actually looks like it might be good. There we go. <laughs> you know what? Let us compare it to Mr. Jake Marshall. Huh. Well, what do you know? This is Jake Marshall's print. Hey, these fingerprints, they... Whose are they? Whose? Is it someone I know? It's Officer Marshall. Huh? Officer Jake Marshall? Oh, dear. That's gotta be a coincidence. He's not involved in the crime. Emma. These are decidedly different from Detective Gumshoe's prints. The luminal reaction, the blood and the fingerprints are, the s are in the same place. Oh. Oh. So we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints on a wiped blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall... It looks like our investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you'd call decisive evidence. I... I don't believe it. <sighs> anyway, guys, that is it for today. I'm done. My throat is killing me. This has been DKCOV13, and I will see you guys next time for when we start the trial for day three. Alright, see you guys then. Bye.